Okay. Um, so, welcome to the September 21st, 2020 meeting of the North Brookfield School Committee. Did we gotta turn the computer on now? <laughs> but we're doing it for you at home, okay? I'm trying to keep the remote access going. So, um, welcome to the September 21st, 2020 meeting of the North Brookfield School Committee. This meeting is being recorded by North Brookfield LPAC. Uh, if there is anyone present who is also recording this meeting, please raise your hand so others are aware. This meeting is also being broadcast via Zoom, um, and we do have um, our Zoom requirements. Um, I'm just, I sent a message to everybody saying, can they hear us? And I think we're a little muffled, so I don't know if it's the mics that they need to hear or it's just the masks. It might be a little bit of both, but um, we're working through the LPAC sound, so I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping that it, it, it gets better. I'm getting a lot of very staticky. Is this better? Better? Yeah, that's that's better. better. Okay, all right. Uh, so like when we're speaking, speak into our microphones. Yeah, that's that, that out of there. All right, cool. Um, so the biggest thing is um, the Zoom, we need the, not the biggest thing, the Zoom uh, <laughs> policy. All right, it is as follows. Let's see. All right, so we're now going to begin a remote meeting for the use of video communication. It's important that we continue to respect the privacy and confidentiality of members of our school community, including our teachers and staff and our students and their families. By participating in this remote meeting today, you agree that you will not save, record, share, or post this session or any photos from this session. Uh, I will not be recording this session for uh, any reason, and... Uh, it will be, as Mrs. Tucker said, be recorded and reposted by LPAC. If you do not agree to these rules or don't want to participate in a recorded meeting that will be posted and shared, uh, please disconnect from this session now. All right. Um, so I just to let people know I brought a lap book, uh, laptop from home so we can keep an eye on the chat here. And uh, I'm signed in under my husband's name. So if you see Kevin Tucker there, that he is actually not here. Um, I just wanted to start, I, I did ask um, anybody if they had any any words of appreciation for any of our staff, so I have a few things I want to start with a little bit of recognition. Um, thanks to the fifth grade teachers for constantly answering my frantic emails last week when things were just not working right technology-wise, while you were trying to teach in your classroom students as well. I seriously don't know how you do it. Thanks to Mr. Minucci for always answering my phone calls, returning my messages, emails all summer long, and into the first few weeks of school. I know it has been so busy for him, but you would never know. Beckett comes home and can't wait to tell me he got a lot of air high fives from Mrs. Tarantino for being such a good reader. Thanks to Mrs. Priestley and all the staff for just making the first week so welcoming for kids and for myself as a parent. I was so nervous to send my kids back, but I knew they needed to be there, and my nerves were instantly settled on that first day, seeing everyone so happy, and my kids come home every day so excited to tell me about being at school. It's still a warm, fun, clean place to learn. I'd like to give a big shout out to Mrs. Servant and Mrs. Martin for being so organized and attentive with digital learning so far. Academic assignments are, for the most part, accessible and not overwhelming. These teachers respond to emails, in a timely fashion, focus on academic and social-emotional education during this unprecedented time. They've also offered to put better hard copy pickup bags for the students, which is going above and beyond our expectations. We've had some technology hiccups, but they've been great at troubleshooting and trying to eradicate the issues quickly. I'd also like to thank the school secretary, Dresden Renault, for being so helpful with this transition. The food services and cafeteria staff have also been exceptional with adjusting to the new lunch routine and pickup meals. The school psychologists, Tyler Petrus and Mr. Minucci, have also been responsive to emails and scheduling meetings assessments. It takes a team, and this team that my girls have at NBES has blown me away thus far. 
Um, Mrs. Pratt, my kids love seeing her at drop off. <laughs> I'd like to shout out Mrs. Martin for remote teaching four grades of students. She has been patient and strength based and positive. As always, please shout out Allison Bulger. Her job is often overlooked and sometimes thankless, LOL, but in our current environment, her task is even harder. I always appreciate her diligence and her humor, especially in a COVID opening. Also, thanks to Dresden, Sheila, and Mary Beth. I'm not done yet. Hmm. Thank you for being patient. Um, to all the teachers out there, we know you do so much more than just teach. Thank you. I was concerned, as most parents, how my children would react to the changes and the new look of things at school, on the bus, etc. But when they got home that first day, I was pleasantly relieved that they were just so happy to be back. They didn't really seem to notice or didn't mind the changes. I know how hard it is and an adjustment for everyone involved in this new world we are navigating. However, the job of school systems must be one of the most challenging. I appreciate everyone's efforts, teachers, support staff, nursing, culinary, janitorial, grounds crew, buses, transportation, and anyone else I may have left out. As a mom and a teacher, I could not be more happy with how the elementary school has turned out for my daughter. The building is bright, warm, and welcoming. I took a peek into her classroom and found a beautiful room that was inviting and just like a third grade classroom should be. My heart is happy that my child can attend school in person. Thank you to everyone who has a part in this. North Brookfield Elementary School is a magical place where learning, smiles, and laughter still exist. Shout out to Mr. Stanley at the high school for his postcards and ongoing communication with his students during COVID and the summer plus the birthday greeting he sent for my daughter. We truly appreciate you and your effort. Um, and then just for myself, um, we had a technical, technological glitch last Wednesday and my daughter got kicked off of Zoom before she got to share and Mr. Cervello called us up and jumped back on Zoom with her so she could uh, let him know how she was doing. So I appreciate that very much. All right. Can I add one thing? Yep. I, I really enjoyed the, the videos made for the introduction to the school and the COVID procedures because, you know, obviously kids can come in ahead of time and learn what was going on. So um, I enjoyed the cutout buses and the, the production value was, was commendable. So it was, <laughs> it was a really nice thing to see and it was fun. It was a fun watch and I think it showed them what to expect when they got here. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, so now we just we have two minutes that we need to approve uh, the regular meeting of August 17th 2020 and the special meeting of September 8th 2020 uh, does anyone have any comments on the meeting minutes corrections or anything all right I need a motion to approve I move to approve the meeting minutes from uh, regular meeting of August 17th and a second Who said that? I, I did. Okay. Elizabeth, sorry. Elizabeth, sorry. I, I, I saw her all right. say it. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to abstain because I wasn't there. Okay. Um, and the uh, special meeting of September 8th, you need a motion for that one too? I move to accept the uh, minutes of the special meeting of September 8th. I second. That was Ruth. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we, we have Megan Bogus. Yep, um, I see her there. Bogus, uh, so Megan uh, Bogus is the student, student representative. So um, hi, Megan. Why don't you tell us what's been going on? Okay, Peter, can we? Yes, we can. So we had a few things going on in the student council for like the last month, I guess. And so we were here school where we set tables and all the entrances of the school and handed out the D bags and teachers and schedules. And we decorated the school with streamers, balloons, painted rocks in front of the school. And hello, hello, the around the hallway. Um, we're having a fundraiser for Chromebook covers, and they'll be sold for $15 a piece. 
And we have a QR code around the high school, and you can scan it with your phone if you live at the purchase one. And then any new students or like people who still live at school who want to sign up for student council, we also have a QR code for that around the school, so they can just scan their phone and send in a Google Doc with like 20 signatures, and then they'll be accepted in. And then we're still figuring out if we can have homes come in or not and figure out the date for that. And the activities fair coming up. We are planning on having this virtually. We'll send out a Google form for each student to fill out and they can select which activities they would like to sign for. And then they will be added to a Google Classroom and posted and checked as they will be checked as they will be And that's about it. So we're going to be meeting with the student council um, e-board, I believe, beginning Thursday on a regular basis. So some of those topics that Megan covered are part of that meeting. Like typically, they've had an activities fair where students, where student groups are out in the hallways and mm -hmm. kids come up and uh, find out a little bit more about that club or activity. Obviously, we can't do it in the right. traditional way, so we're going to explore some alternative ways to be able to have an activity sphere so kids can see what types of uh, options are available. So if I understood correctly, every activity will have a Google Classroom and you can sign up to go yeah. check it out? Yeah, we got to just finalize okay. the details to make it work for everyone. Cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Megan. Thank you, Megan. So we actually did have correspondence to the school committee uh, from the commissioner. Commissioner Riley, yeah. Yep. Um, which we're going to address that. Actually, two letters. One from, what about, actually, no, it's just one letter. I guess. One letter with one letter. two pieces. Two yeah. pieces. Um, and we're going to move things around just a little bit. So um, in Mr. Uh, Lynn's report later on, he was going to discuss what, we, what is called the phases of learning. So that's when we make decisions about switching from one mode of learning to another. Um, so we're gonna bring that and discuss that real quickly right now, yep. and then we'll have some time for public participation. And the letter from the commissioner actually is part of that. So Mr. Lynn, if you wanna just go over the uh, phases of learning. Yeah, so the commissioner's letter, there's two parts. The first part is uh, the Department of Public Health's website, their color-coded health metric uh, for every town in the state. Uh, and the whole idea was to provide districts with information um, about the general level of COVID health, for lack of a better term, within their community so that they could make decisions. And part of those decisions are obviously around school. So we've been working uh, in the superintendent's uh, association to sort of try to parse that out. And one of the challenges, I think, as I explained in the last meeting, is that every community is so individual. You know, a, a community like North Brookfield is a small rural community. Having a one-size-fits-all approach to closing versus opening versus a community like Worcester probably doesn't make sense. Um, so, um, so what we've worked on is a general sort of guideline to follow um, where based on the total number of confirmed cases and the state of Massachusetts positivity rate, would be two metrics that we would use as kind of a guiding light and then use local context with the school committee, the Board of Health, uh, and other local officials to make decisions about whether we should be in remote learning, hybrid learning, or move to all-in-person learning. I think we all understand at this point all-in-person learning, is, we're not ready for that. I'm probably in the short term. I don't know what short, how to define short-term or long-term anymore based on uh, what you hear in the news, but, um, but I think really for us it's whether we should be in hybrid or remote at this point. 
Um, and that's what we tried to, to pull together as a superintendent's uh, association was, uh, you know, the whole idea of looking at the number of confirmed cases within a, a community and the state positivity rate, um, and then work together with, you know, Board of Health, other local officials, school committee to say what's right for our community given the current conditions and all the local context that goes into that. Um, so I forwarded this to the Board of Health um, and actually had a conversation today with uh, Mr. Brusso and he, um, he indicated they're looking at that uh, and would get back to me with some feedback. I uh, also went back to our superintendents association and asked for more, uh, mo if there could be more. And I think that's where we're running into. Hi, Rich. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't mean to cut in. I'm just, this is nearly impossible to hear. And I think you're going over probably what I'm hearing. Um, so I'm sorry. I'm not going to interrupt you. I'm just going to say that this is No, I I'm wondering, would it be possible to just to just to, to continue the Zoom meeting and continue the filming, but not go through the LPAC sound system? Well, the good problem with that is then it, there won't be any sound on the LPAC. So, Rich, can you take your? I mean, we are six feet away. So, if he takes his mask off, see if this is any better. Elizabeth, is this better? I don't know. It's hard to tell. It seemed like it seemed better initially, and then just it's. Yeah, I don't know. We have to. You have to talk a little more. So, so you can't just zoom the meeting so the people who are remote can hear you through the zoom, and then Alpac can film it separately. So that, or is that you know what I'm saying? Well, I think the, that's the problem we ran into last time, which was Alpac, you know, was recording us, but we didn't have a way to record the sound. So you, you, you know. What you said. Yeah. Okay. So last time the sound was bad because. We had the mic in the room and trying to have it on the web. So you guys at home, you were telling me the sound was bad. Is it any? Can you hear me better now? Not really. Not really. Okay. Um. You know what? We're let's take a break here in the meeting, okay? So we're gonna. Uh, can I get a motion to temporarily adjourn here? I'll make a motion to temporarily adjourn. We'll be back. We'll try to be back in like ten minutes. In a second. Okay. Sorry, what are we doing? Uh, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna like adjourn for ten minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. So we okay. can see if we can make this better. Let me go get them downstairs. Although, does he? Can he see us?
will be able to hear us talking on YouTube. They'll post their comments. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to keep on their comments and they'll be addressed. So Tim is going to... Can you guys hear me now? No? Not yet? Hello? What am I going to do? So type... Hello, hello, hello. ...public <laughs> participation. That's what the problem is there. People who are on Zoom and YouTube. Okay, so we the can't sound up is so we can't have people horrible. Can we have people on YouTube watching and then chatting on Zoom, but they have to be muted on Zoom? I, I think so, but I think there's a delay. Okay. There's a delay to YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. I think there is a like a five second delay. Why is it coming on my phone? Oh, because I went to I know because yeah, I went to YouTube. <laughs> so stupid. I don't know what to do. Can we just have a go full on zip? Well, then they can't. Should we just like try this again? What if we have the meeting next Monday? No, we have to have the meeting now. Can we? Thank you for saying that. See, this is your kid that's a little behind. You just said, what's going on with my phone? Yeah. So, because you have a Bluetooth right now, right, Rich? Yeah. To your computer. Yeah. But it's it's the delay. Mm -hmm. So, Maria said, oh, I have it on my phone. Like, what yeah. 30 seconds ago, and then it just came out. So, okay, can we just do a Zoom meeting? And they can record us on Zoom, right? Can we just do that for this evening? Are they, are they, are they signed in on Zoom for us? Yeah, and these people are all on Zoom. Yep. The, okay. only, the only difference was the live piece. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, of course, then when we, you know, we unmute ourselves, is that going to be a feedback for you? It's going to be a nightmare. So, so I guess... Use, can we use the microphone of the speaker and plug this, plug it into the computer? Like, what did we do last time where we had the microphone? We had the microphone plugged in, but people complained they couldn't hear very well. But that was working, and then oh, it so stopped they can't working. Complain. I mean, they can't hear it all now. Like, it's right in the chat. If you go up, it says, you know, they said they couldn't hear. Right. Um, so, I mean, honestly, the easiest thing to do so we can actually have a meeting tonight is to just do a Zoom meeting. Yeah, and we would just have to go to separate rooms. Okay. Because when we're in the same room, we get all the feedback. So, you can yeah. use this. So I'll use my phone. Okay. Then, um, hopefully I don't run out of... Do you have an iPhone charger? Yeah. Do you want to use this and I can go get my computer? No, no, just use this because then we'll, we'll, otherwise we're going to be here forever. All right. Should we go on Zoom in another room then? 
Gene, do you want to go to my office? I got to take this to another room there too, right? Or else it's feedback with Rich's computer. Yeah. So I think we have to set Maria and Tim up in separate rooms, Sarah. Okay. Yeah, I just need a I need a charger for my phone. Because I'm like, oh, I won't need my phone. Um, where do you want to go? I don't have to go far. Yeah. Like one room over Speech. or something? Right over here? I'll sit in the hallway if I need yeah. to. It doesn't matter. We have a nice room over here, and that's a nice room over here, actually. Both rooms are. Yeah, whatever. Pretty nice. A little here, you know. That's on this corner of that encounter. Do you want to go there? Sure. It's on the uh, agenda. I'll forward it to you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so we're back. I can hear myself. It's kind of annoying, but oh well. Um, so, Rich, one if you could it be succinct in going over what you were talking about, the commissioner's letter and the phase. Would it help if people still muted themselves that are nearby? Well, I just, it's because I'm right next to the, the um, school committee room. That's all. I, other than that, it's fine. Yes. I had to unplug everything, so it took me a minute. All right, so we're all Zoom now, and LPAC is recording through Zoom. So we're still working on the technology end, I guess, is the best way to, to describe this. All right, um, do you want me to try to pick up where we left off in some way, shape, or form? Okay, I will. Um, Rich, um, yeah, if you want to uh, uh, succinctly go over the phases of learning, please. Okay, so I presented the phases of learning in the last school committee meeting, a special meeting on September 8th. Um, it was, I think as I said then, um, a compilation of work done at the Superintendents Association to try to help districts with identifying when it's time to shift from either remote to a hybrid, hybrid to in-person or to remote, whatever uh, it might be. The challenge that, that we've had putting together something is, is, uh, that's acceptable to all is the one size fits all approach. The idea that every community is the same just doesn't exist. Worcester is different from North Brookfield, that's different from, um, you know, a vocational school that serves whatever, 10, 12, 15 communities. So there's no good one model that says this is when you should switch from one to the other. So uh, what we did was we put together uh, two pieces of information. One is uh, case, confirmed cases per 100,000 and the state of Massachusetts positivity rate as a guide. Um, to assist in making transition decisions. Uh, the cases per 100,000 is that color-coded map that you see on the DPH website of red, yellow, green, or gray, I guess, is the best way to describe the, the color that sort of outlines and defines how many cases per 100,000 your town has. And then the state of, positive, state of Massachusetts positivity rate um, has been um, essentially, I think, uh, um, sort of sent out on a daily basis as well. How many, this, uh, of the number of people tested, how many are positive? Um, and they're shooting for less than 2% is what their real, their, their biggest goal is. Uh, well, obviously their biggest goal was to have it zero, but they, they like to see it below 2%. So, um, so at the last meeting, uh, the committee asked me to forward this to the Board of Health and back to the Superintendents Association for some more help. I've done both. Um, I spoke to Trevor Russo from the Board of Health today. He said he's not ignoring us. They are looking at it. They're going to get us some feedback on it. Um, and uh, the Superintendents Association is sort of stuck because you have this, um, so many school districts are different. They just, as I defined and said earlier, that no school district is alike to others. It's all this local context that plays into the decision making. So I don't know what we're going to get from the um, 
from the superintendents and from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I keep hearing that DPH might come out with some more guidance on this, but we haven't seen it yet. Um, and I think that's probably partly what the Board of Health would be waiting for is they work under the, you know, the local Board of Health works under the Mass Department of Public Health. So they're sort of stuck in waiting to see what DPH might come out with. So. I don't have a lot more information from the last meeting to share about this phases of learning piece, um, other than the feedback continues to be that they are uh, asking us, when I say they, DPH and, and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education are encouraging um, districts to use multiple weeks of data, to not, as the commissioner has stated, ping pong between learning models based on a day or a week's worth of data uh, because it could change um, between yellow and green or gray on some to some degree of regularity and if every day that it changes you're moving your learning model then you have this huge sort of constant change that you never really get anywhere. So they're really encouraging uh, three weeks of data was, is what they're really sort of the number they're pushing. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's up to us as a community to decide what's right, because it may be cases where three weeks doesn't make sense. Uh, we've seen other communities where there's a huge number of people who are positive in a short period of time. They need to make quick decisions, and that's not three weeks. And there's other situations where making a quick decision isn't the right decision based on whatever the context of those individual circumstances are. So that's kind of the phases of learning document. I think DPH and ultimately our local board of health, we really do need to weigh in. And I think, again, I know I said it probably two or three weeks ago that there was information that they would be coming out with something to help us, but it hasn't come yet. Uh, so. Um, so that's where that's at. Maria, Maria, you are muted. Sorry. Um, so just uh, wrap up. DPH and DESE, their advice is, in, is to, in most cases, use three weeks of data. So, um, and also with the, the going between the phases of learning models. So to not make a rapid decision unless there's a large outbreak. And that is the advice that we have thus far. The Board of Health is looking at, at it and hasn't gotten back to us just yet. Um, so, Right now, we're going to do public participation. Um, and because we do have other things we need to cover, we're going to set the public participation at 20 minutes. Um, if you have a question about the situation that Mr. Lind um, sent home a letter about today, and I'll ask him real quickly to just go over that again. Um, if you, in the chat, put type your name and then type your question, and we will um, spend about 15 to 20 minutes uh, going over those questions. And then if you have further questions, um, you can email me at mtucker um, at nbschools.org and we'll try to get back to you. So Rich, can you just go over the real quickly the situation that you um, shared with um, the school community today? Yeah, so uh, we were informed that uh, we had a member of our school community uh, test positive um, after going through kind of the contact, contact tracing process. Um, determined that uh, this person was out of school when they had contact and were tested and were positive. So the person was at home essentially when this all came down. So no members, staff or students would be considered having close contact with that, uh, with that individual. Um, so um, I know that lots of folks are concerned and want uh, more information. Um, there's not a lot more to share other than that the, the person who uh, is positive has not been in the building, essentially, 
um, from the time of um, exposure and testing to now. Um, can you can you clarify the content of the letter because it sounded as though um, it sounded as though they were exposed to someone who tested positive on Wednesday. Yep. So, so they were exposed to someone who tested positive on Wednesday and they saw them after they tested positive? They saw them and then the person tested positive. Right. So they would have seen them before Wednesday. Uh, no. That's not, that's not, no, that's not the way it occurred. Oh, it's not? Okay. Because I would think that if someone tested positive on Wednesday, so they saw them on Wednesday? I mean, I'm just because if I tested positive, I wouldn't come in contact. But I'm trying to understand if they, they, they they saw them and then the test occurred. Right. Okay. So they were since they are symptomatic, they were likely symptomatic on Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure of that. I'm not privy to that. My understanding is that um, they saw the person, then the person was tested, was positive. Were informed of that, they went to get tested and they were positive. So this all ha this all happened after their time uh, in the school building. The in testing. The building. No. The testing. Everything. Like after they left on Tuesday, they saw the person after that. Yes. Oh, okay. So that is the case. I, I just want people to understand. I have to be very careful here. I totally understand. I totally understand. It's just the way the letter I'm read. To, I'm trying not to be avoid questions, but I, I also have to maintain some level of confidentiality. And we Absolutely. Have a community that every time I answer a question that gives a, a further insight, I'm trying, I, I guess my of no one here staff a student was a close contact to the student i feel like is pretty direct like, oh, okay and people are asking well when well i'm telling you there was no one here who's a close contact every time i answer a question it, okay okay i, I uh, think i think sure people understand no I, i'm glad i think that's good clarification because i think there was some the i just want question to, you know if you look at the letter it says i did no one here uh, no staff of students were a close contact. So I, I, I'm trying to answer questions because I know they're out there and I want to provide that. But I, I, I want people to understand I'm not avoiding questions because I'm trying to hide something other than ensuring the confidentiality of students and staff uh, and families. Because if it was any of our families, we wouldn't want that shared uh, necessarily. Um, so no, I don't think anyone's asking for the know, student's name or anything like that, but just clarification that, that because I, I know these questions have come up, yeah, no, so that's helpful. Thank letter, you. In the letter, I, I thought I did put it clearly. Apparently, I didn't, but uh, I thought it had said, you know, no staff of students were uh, close contacts. So, um, yeah. essentially, that, oh, sorry, Tim. Um, I think I understand the need to be vague and and, but you know, obviously, when you're when you're when you're saying technical person is thinking close contact, I think this is an opportunity. Maybe if you could just briefly discuss um, how that contact tracing process went, without getting into detail, who I think it maybe maybe it can reassure people. It shows an example of all right, we, we found out on such and such a day that there was a positive interaction with a person. Interaction. Maybe you can just walk us through that really quickly on how how that went down. Um, so we we actually got a call. Get no one came into contact, so just to be sure that people are saying how we determined that. Yeah. So we actually got a call from the family about the, the positive test. Um, we then reported to both the Department of Education and to the local Board of Health. Uh, the Board of Health checks through the DPH site to make sure that they're aware of it, and they were, because a positive test from wherever they went to get tested 
gets reported to DPH. So it's trying to tie up all the loose ends. My report to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, again, is not specific to any person. It's specific to a situation. They want to make sure that they're available to help us with tracking or a rapid response unit if there's a larger outbreak um, and double back as they meet with DPH. So um, the whole idea is that we're cross-referencing between school, healthcare providers, and state and local health agencies that they're all in the loop and they understand the, the exact situation. I'm not sure I answered your question if that, with that answer though. Did I? Uh, I was just, you know, so when you, when you first got the phone call, the, 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 the information you need to give before about the UIC, they may or may not come in contact with from the time. So you, you would have had to find out when they we're in contact with whoever else that tested positive. Right. So, yeah, we we find out sort of when and where everybody's been. Our nurse did that. And based on the timing, the student wasn't in the building from the time of contact to the time of a positive test. So whenever they had a close contact to, which was Wednesday, to the time they were tested, which was Thursday, uh, I'm sorry, which was uh, Friday, um, they got the results. So they were not in the building at any point. And, uh, you know, we follow up with questions like, have they been in contact with anybody? Um, have they seen any, you know, any other people that are would have been in the building? Um, and according to the family, the answer was no. So had it happened in school or had they been in school? Been a different sort of letter with more information based on who they would have interacted with. Sure. If if the say the person who tested positive had been in school, the communication that we have, and it's in the protocols, but we have a, a series of letters, uh, would have been, you know, for example, if it was in your child's, I don't know, third grade classroom, just mm -hmm. don't mean to pick on third grade, so don't be worried. Um, it would have been a letter to the students in that third grade classroom saying your child was a close contact. They need to quarantine. Uh, we encourage you to see your uh, physician. It would have been a very different letter. This is at the junior senior high where kids do move about mm -hmm. and, and aren't necessarily cohorted all day um, at the senior high particularly. Um, again, we would have had to go through all the classes say a student or a staff person was in and all those people would get a letter saying they were a close contact. Others would get a letter saying there was a situation but your child was not a close contact. Um, so it depends on the situation of what the communication will be, if that makes sense. Yes, yeah, we actually got a comment in the chat that says much clearer than the email. She thanks you for clarifying it. Okay. Good. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, my intention was not to make it uh, confusing, and apparently I did, and I apologize for that. Uh, yeah, we're all, everyone's conditioned to go into panic mode, so, you know, we just... Me too. <laughs> I try not to, though. I thought <laughs> walking, so we just want to make sure we get the information out there. So I Absolutely. Thank you for getting all the people that. So if you couldn't understand, Tim, he was saying someone in the chat said that um, that explanation was much clearer than the email and then just that this is a new situation for everybody and we're all trying to manage it. So is there any um, in the chat, are there any questions about anything, any, anything else besides? Does anyone have any comments or questions about this, that particular situation? Nope, just hope everyone's well. Yes. Agreed. Um, all right, so before I move on, I just want to make sure anyone have any, any of our listeners, any comments or questions? I don't see anything in the chat, so I'm going to move on. All right. Um, 
So financial report. And again, I'm going to ask you to be succinct, please. Okay, so no major changes. The only big change that I can see coming is, maybe, is some um, amendments to our um, coronavirus, the various coronavirus relief uh, grants that we have. Um, you know, there are some things we planned on that we don't necessarily or will not do. Um, and there are some things that we planned a certain amount of money for and we need more or less. So we want to adjust it accordingly. Uh, for example, we have some final repairs at the junior senior high for the HVAC system, some uh, dampers and programming needs to happen. Um, we thought we were good there. Uh, it's, there's some additional expense with that. So we do need to move a little bit around uh, on that and we have a couple of other items. So that's the major piece that you'll see next time in our, although you don't see that specifically, you see the total expenditure, uh, but just so you know, uh, we are gonna uh, amend those grants. And that's a pretty regular practice with our grants is to, to make some amendments to, to move things around as um, often those are written weeks, months, even a year in advance actually spending the money so we often are estimating what something might cost or, uh, or guessing what we might need it's educated guessing but sometimes it turns out to be a little different uh, in terms of the, um, the, the um, district budget i think we're very much on track we've updated um, with the approval of the esps uh, one year contract salaries have been updated so there'll be a bit of a change there in terms of the percentage obviously it will increase a bit uh, but we're in good shape with that um, and just so you know i can check off another thing from my report all positions have now been filled we don't have any open positions i believe for the entire district we had a couple of instructional assistant positions that we've Build in, so um, there are no open positions, which is great. Um, so our our budget is very much on track. Um, not a lot to report. I think we're still at the beginning, and in a lot of ways, teachers and, and administrators are figuring out what they do need uh, to to uh, effectively do what we need to do this year. Um, now that they have a full week in there under their belt and we're into the second week, I think we'll start to see some of those expenditures creep back up um, for supplies and materials that there's, you know, that they really wanna um, um, get to support students. So um, not a lot to report other than we're very much on track for where we should be. All right, great. Um, so moving on to the administrator's reports, um, Ms. Powers and um, Mr. Lind, if you want to give us the high school report, middle school, high school. Sure, thank you. Um, so the first couple days of school have been great. Uh, you know, I wanted to shout out and thank all of the staff, the faculty, the staff, the support staff, the custodians, um, Allison Bulger, and as the secretary, just everyone's really stepped up to make it a uh, positive and um very efficient couple days of school so far and like uh, Mr. Lynn said we're into our second week so we're definitely starting to get a groove. Um, all, almost every junior senior high student has picked up their Chromebook and teachers have been using Chromebooks in and out of the classroom so when students are at home for the hybrid model and also in the classroom. So it's been great to walk around and see a lot of uh, technology in action. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to just say is that our parent-teacher conferences for the fall is going to be Wednesday October 14th. Um, we will send more communication out about that, but um, just so everyone can kind of put it on their calendar for the 14th in the, in the evening from 6 to 8 p.m., we are going to have virtual uh, parent-teacher conferences. So more information to come on that. Um, Mrs. Priestley? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. So I just wanted to echo what Ms. Power said about the um, coming back and it's been amazing the kids having them here seeing them on their um, remote classrooms with Mrs. Martin and Mrs. Servant um, it's just been really great to be with kids again um, so just a huge thank you to all the staff that's been able to make that possible um, we are working on a 
back to school night, virtual style. It's going to be kind of a Bitmoji style. So stay tuned as we work out the details on that. But I think it's going to be really cool, uh, kind of a neat format for uh, all the families to meet our teachers and kind of make it a little fun. So uh, we do a picture day this week. Uh, oh, sorry, Mr. Yeah. Linda, did you want to? What's, the, what's your projected date for that? We are um, scheduled to have our back to school night on September 30th. So it's a week from Wednesday. We pushed it back a week just to give us more time to put the digital uh, format together. And also because we, it feels like we just started since we got the late start with kids. So um, it made sense to push it back. Uh, we do have picture day this week. So tomorrow is for our cohort A and C students. So A and then the C who are here four days a week. Um, and then on Thursday for our cohort B students and also our remote students have the opportunity to come in um, anytime between nine and two to get their um, picture taken. That's it for me. All right, great. Mr. Minucci. To be real brief, um, starting next month, I'm going to have a, a bi-weekly communication call on Wednesday evenings, um, kind of a takeoff from uh, Donuts with the Director from last year, um, and I'll be sending out an email to the whole community to do that. Um, also, uh, the, the CPAC has been reorganized, and we will be starting up in October, and we will be starting those meetings off as Zoom meetings. Um, and again, I'll send out an email to the entire uh, uh, school community for that. And that's all I have for today. Um, actually, I, I want to mention something about um, something uh, project Mr. Minucci spearheaded um, with money and materials donated by the Rotary Club of the Brookfields Angels Backpacks, Country Auto Body and Community Members. Um, the Student Services Department at North Brookfield Public School has over 30 desk shields built and distributed to teachers and staff at all the schools in the district. Um, the shields have given students and staff protection and added peace of mind in delivering services to students. The initiative has spread and at least seven neighboring districts have started their own initiative and surrounding Rotary Clubs, including Sturbridge Rotary, are helping in the challenge. So we did share some pictures. They're basically, they go on top of a desk and, or a table and they're plexiglass and they're held together they have I don't know pipes or something PVC pipes <laughs> for the sides but it was really wonderful um yeah, yeah. Uh, we get donations and help from country auto and uh I know also from the rotary club and some other groups so it was really a great uh thing for the the kids and the teachers to have so thanks Mr. Minucci you're welcome thank you Maria all right um so uh, the curriculum, Mrs. Powers again. Back to me, thanks. Um, so I just wanted to touch base before, since the last time we had our school committee meeting, we did have our professional development days at the beginning of the school year. I think over the summer we thought, what are we gonna do? There's 12 days, we gotta plan it. And uh, we did a really great job um, as administrative team putting together things that fit under our topics, which was technology integration, um, looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion, safety, um, and building relationships with students. So it was a very successful 12 days. I really think that it was beneficial for us to use those days to get ready um, for this unique year. And I would love to actually have more days before school starts in the future. Um, maybe not 12, but I do think having a few more really allowed staff to build on some of the things that they've been working on over the past few years. Um, and then just lastly, a shout out to um, Mrs. Dubuque, who, who is running our mentoring program. Our new teachers all have a mentor and um, they've been starting to meet regularly and really getting that program off the ground. So thank you to her um, for making those connections and allowing our new staff to um, get the support they need um, this year, especially. So that's all, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Um, so Mrs. O'Hara has a, a short report that uh, Chromebook distribution started for the junior senior high school last week um, and they have loaned also 32 iPads to students in pre-K first grade. Uh, for students in second through six, they've loaned about 65 Chromebooks to students. Um, there's a new tech assistant who has been a great help, Justin Hackinson. Um, the infrastructure upgrade has been completed. Uh, there is an access point in 95% of the classrooms in the district. Um, and then last but not least for me anyway, the Google app issues with the 
Google Suite for Education has been resolved, which makes my daughter really happy. So <laughs> I had a question on Cindy's report. I saw that yep. um, the eight Chromebooks that haven't been passed out yet. Do we know if that's a transportation or a timing or a financial with the insurance? Is it no big deal or is it something that people that I can help with? Um, and I know I'm not trying to get into privacy, but is it something that I can drop off at night? Like everyone needs one. Um, so I, I, I think um, it, it varies for the reasons. Some, some students um, are working remotely and they have a device at home and we've told them when they do come back, they do need a Chromebook because we're trying to eliminate the personal devices on our network. They, there's a security issue with that, with malware and spyware and all that. So we're trying to eliminate the idea of personal, uh, you know, kids and staff personal devices on our network. Um, but since you know some some are working remotely, they don't need the Chromebook right away. Um, others, it's just um, connecting with the parent and you know figuring out a time and, and those kinds of things. We've made accommodations. Um, I don't think we need to drive to home to ask them to just fill out the paperwork and email it or send it in and we'll we'll just take the parent if the parent can't we'll take their uh the paperwork and that, that they're signing off on and we'll get it to uh get them their student their chromebook any student that doesn't have a chromebook we give them a daily loaner uh, they do need it at home but um we're in pretty good shape right now but if we do need help i'll keep you in mind Okay, just curious if there was a place to step in. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the number. Like, we're almost completely handed out. It's great. Um, really super. Uh, we did have a question on chat. Um, sorry, am I, am I muted? No, nope, you're good. Okay. Um, the insurance cost is prohibitive to many families who are struggling right now. Are there accommodations for families who can't afford to pay the insurance for the Chromebook? Yeah, we've made accommodations for families, uh, for junior, senior, high families, because they get them for three years, and we're self-insuring. So we're, we're working with a, a company called Worth, the Worth Group. Um, and so we need to pay the insurance bill so that if anything happens to them over those three years, we can get them repaired or replaced. Uh, we're, we're working with families when they need uh, assistance to try to try to figure out how we can move forward. But yes, we are making accommodations. Okay. Any other questions or any about that? Um, so last is Mr. Shaw's report. Um, and he says school started and it's great to see staff and students in the building. Um, they've done all their yearly inspections of the fire alarm system, generators, elevators, and had our walkthrough with the fire department and the building inspectors. Um, and the board of health also did a walkthrough. Uh, the air, he's, the HVAC systems and equipment has been tested and they are still in the process of getting the vendors in. As you can imagine, all schools are doing the same thing and these vendors are doing all they can to get to each of us. Uh, Schneider Electric has evaluated our elementary system and they are working on programming to update the system for more outside air changes. They've gone through the system that they have control in the high school and I'll be meeting with them next week to review things. Um, they're going, uh, there's another company that is going through all the individual classroom unit events in the high school and have a couple more days of testing to complete. Um, the elementary school has a different system, so uh, should be less of an issue. And they conducted air quality testing and it, uh, inspected the HVAC systems. And there will be a report issued, which will be a baseline for ongoing testings. His initial findings are that we are in good shape. And also that they're staying busy getting ready for fall sports. sports and as always, he thanks his staff for their hard work. All right. Any other, any questions about the reports? Nope, all right. Um, so uh, we do have to do a final approval of interscholastic inter athletics before they can begin. So there is uh, information if you wanna give it to us really quickly. 
um, what the how it's going to be set up. I, I provided you the memo, and it's essentially what we got last time, except for some bullet points um, on the top of page two. Um, Mr. Sloan, our athletic director, was part of these meetings. Essentially, everybody in Central Mass is playing as long as they're not in red. Uh, and the only ones that are, in, are not in red that aren't playing are the vocational schools because there's just too many communities that are involved. They can't manage all those different uh, possible community outbreaks that might happen. Uh, they put us in, in pods here. Uh, we're in pod number two with uh, Bay Path, Crowdy, Leicester, uh, Quaybog, Shepherd Hill, Southbridge, and Tantasqua. They try to do it geographically to keep people closer together. Um, we're going to play everybody at least once with the season ending in mid-November. Um, and they tried to set up the, the meets so that it would be spaced out. So, for example, cross country, their meets will be on Tuesdays and Fridays. Field hockey, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And soccer will be Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, they're just trying to move things around. Um, we've, we've gone through signups to try to be ahead of the curve. Uh, uh, we could definitely ha um, have teams out there uh, for each sport. There is a drop in, in participation, as you might imagine. Uh, some of that has been people who have, are just concerned about the, the health and well-being, and some is uh, folks that have opted for other uh, options, like playing AAU or a club or some other thing because uh, they feel the, uh, the regulations, the guidelines are, are too strict. Um, so it, it's across the board from too strict to not strict enough, I guess. So. Uh, it's all individual. I do think it's um, it's it would be great if we can do it. I would recommend that the school committee approve athletics. We will be working diligently, not only internally but with other schools and communities, to make sure their uh, schools and communities don't have uh, uh, significant outbreaks or back, so to speak. But um, I think what they put into place uh, it is really strong and I know we did have Mr. Sloan on here earlier. I don't know if we chased him off with our tech issues. I'm here. Oh Kevin, jump right in if I missed anything, please feel free. Uh no, you seem to cover everything. Um like you said, we're in the pods. It's based on geography. It cuts travel down by like twenty miles or close to twenty miles on average less time on the buses for the kids who have to wear the masks and um, limited amount of games just to get everybody out there. And all the ADs are in agreement that it's just kind of, let's just get them out there, have some fun. There's no playoffs. There's no tournaments to worry about or any of that. So in terms of the buses is the, it's the, I assume the setup is the same as the, when they're coming to, to and from school. Yes, Absolutely. Will there be spectators allowed at the games? So the Central Mass Athletic Association has decided that there will be one spectator per player for both for home and away games. So like you could go watch Tyler play or you could pass it off to his aunt, but it's only one spectator per event. All right, so if there's no other comments or questions for Mr. Sloan or Mr. Lind about the, the athletics, we have to vote on it. Yeah. We would have to vote to approve it. I move we approve. So we have a second. Uh, all in favor? Who was the second? I'm sorry. I was. Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth. Sorry, I missed it. <laughs> Super. All right, we'll go Thank out there so and uh, have fun, kids. Thank you. And just a, a side note, have fun parents and, and others, but please remember that when we're on campus, we have a mass policy, we have requirements, and the only way we're going to be able to keep having games and, 
And activities like this is if we all follow those guidelines and rules, uh, it's really important. I know it's frustrating at times and uncomfortable at times, but to be able to keep having school, to be able to keep having athletics, we really need people to adhere to those uh, guidelines. If people aren't, we, we just can't have them. And, um, and, and, you know, I'll make that call if I need to. I know the school committee will as well. They want to make sure school opens as I do. Um, we really just need your help, whether it's students, student athletes, coaches, parents, spectators, fans, etc. We just need everybody's help with this to, to, um, to have it work. All right. If you want to play, follow the rules then, please. Um, so moving on to, um, we have to update a policy. Is this the first reading? Um, it, it doesn't need to be the first reading. I move okay. to the, to the um, policy subcommittee. This is um, Collins and I were going through um, some of the graduation requirements that existed in the past and some of the things that we've adjusted over time. Um, also, the idea of adding a digital citizenship course as a graduation requirement is something that we really um, think is important. We also have had, in my three years, a, a number of times where a student has transferred in, in their senior year, for example, and they can't meet a graduation requirement because there's just not enough time because their previous school didn't have that graduation requirement where we have to waive it. It's just one of those, I think this is just cleanup, uh, but I'd certainly like the policy subcommittee to look at it, maybe bring it to uh, the next meeting for a reading and we can go through the three readings. It would All right. Just to give you a heads up that, and, and to remind Mrs. Powers and I to keep this moving forward. Who's, sorry, I should know this. Who's our policy subcommittee? So it's Maria and, and uh, Tim. Okay, so if I would like to make a suggestion to community service paragraph, do I just email them? Yeah, well, I mean, okay. you can send it to me and we'll, when we have our meeting, I think we're gonna do one in October, uh, we'll put it on there. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have several items in new business that we have to vote on. Um, before we vote on the elementary school handbooks, is there anything significantly different that we need to know about the uh, either the elementary or the junior, senior high school handbooks? Um, I'll turn it over to Mrs. Priestley for the elementary. Um, I put in the changes, the uh, biggest change, which is our inclusion of the restorative practices language um, so that we are recognizing that we're not focusing just solely on punitive, the, the you know, um, infraction and consequence system, but also um, realizing that behavior is a form of communication and that we want to work with students and work with their families to try to get at the root of the behaviors um, so that we can teach them how to just be better people. So that's our, that's in there now. Um, so if you have any questions about that, you can let me know. All right. Does anyone have any questions about the, the handbook before we vote to approve it? All right, so we need a motion to approve the elementary school handbook. Um, I can move that we approve the elementary school handbook. And do we have a second? I second. Thanks, All right, all in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Thank and you. so just so you know, Tim is not doing motions because the audio on the computer he's using right now, which is mine, is really bad, so. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, uh, the high junior senior high school uh, handbook. Are there sign any significant changes? Nothing major. We obviously updated all the names and dates. We updated the school committee policies, and that goes for the elementary one as well. Um, we adjusted the handbook with some of the important changes based on the reopening plan. Uh, but 
the, the great majority is similar to last year when we um, we unified them all. Last year was the first year we had unified them. So there wasn't a lot of work that needed to be done, mostly updating. Anyone have any questions or anything? All right, so we need a motion to approve the junior, senior high school handbook. Motion to approve the handbook. Second. All in favor? Aye. Great, thank you. All right, so next we have uh, the improvement plans for both the elementary school and uh, the, the junior senior high. Mrs. Priestley, you want to hit the goals really quickly for the elementary school? Sorry, I was just pulling it up. Um, yes, yeah, so goal one, if we provide more opportunities for families to engage with teachers and staff, then we will be more equipped to provide what students need, resulting in improved student outcomes. Uh, it's our belief that we really want to um, engage families in what we do here at school. That's very important to us. The second goal, if we implement a multi-tiered system of support, we can better address students' academic, behavioral, and social and emotional needs, resulting in every student reaching his or her fullest potential. So taking a multi-tiered um, approach to address student needs is um, in all areas, academic, behavioral, and uh, emotional. So that's something that encompasses our PBIS work, um, our intervention work, our academic intervention work, um, the restorative practices, all of those elements um, really fit there. Um, and then the last one is specifically focused on restorative practices um, as this is a relatively new shift for us. If we implement restorative practices that promote inclusiveness, relationship building, and problem solving in an effort to reduce disciplinary problems, then children will be involved and committed to their schooling, resulting in improved student outcomes. Are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? If not, we need to have a motion to a vote on the school improvement plan. I make a motion to approve the school improvement plan. I have a I second. second. I second the school improvement plan. All in favor? Aye. All right, so the junior senior high school we can have the go over that one real quickly too. So um, the, the junior senior high improvement plan, uh, goal number one is that we build strong relationships with students and families and the students and families will feel more connected to our school, our district, and our community, resulting in improved student outcomes. Um, interestingly enough, both schools are working on building relationships. Uh, and as a matter of fact, that will be a, a professional practice goal for every educator in the, in the district. Uh, Teachers, teachers uh, will all be working on building relationships. We think it's particularly important this year with six months out of school. Um, goal number two also addresses the multi tiered system of support. Uh, if we implement that, we can better address students' academic, behavioral, social, and emotional needs, resulting in every student reaching his or her fullest potential. Uh, again, the idea is that. We've been working with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education on a multi-tiered system of support. Um, we've been working on PBIS, uh, working on student assistance team, and trying to uh, increase academic supports for all students. Uh, we've done a number of different things, but we're trying to pull them all into, together to one sort of goal uh, to move things forward. And then the last goal is we effectively integrate technology into teaching and learning student outcomes will be improved. Obviously, we have some huge technology initiatives going on. Uh, the one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative for one. Uh, you know, we implemented Edgenuity last year, I think very successfully for you, really a full first year. We hope to expand that. Um, and we really wanna move technology from just a, 
get information thing to a two-way communication piece where teachers, students, and parents can communicate with each other effectively. So those are the, the goals around that. Uh, here we see So anyone have any questions? Uh, then we need a motion to approve the junior senior high school school improvement plan. Mm, I can move that we uh, re approve the junior senior school plan. I second. All in favor? Aye. So the next item is a request for transportation from a family of a grade 11 student. Yeah, so the, I don't know what the policy was years ago, how the school district handled that, but I couldn't, I couldn't say that it didn't happen this way, but a uh, student has been riding the bus for 12 years and they're a school choice. Uh, our policy says they're not supposed to, but I was informed that in the past this may have occurred where administrators actually set that up. Uh, I have no documentation of that. That's just from the parent and from some staff that have been around saying, yeah, I think that may have happened. Uh, none of the administrators here were here during those that time. Um, I think based on what the, the parent is telling me, um, it sounds like it was set up. Um, obviously, this came to light for us as we did busing in, in this pandemic world um, where we had to limit the number of kids on the bus. So we actually sent invites to people. And that's when the parent reached out and said, what, my child can't ride the bus. How are they gonna get to school? We have been in this school in Northbrook Field for 12 years now. This is that 12th year, kindergarten through, uh, now into 11th grade. It's impossible. And I said, I, I cannot waive the policy. That is a school committee policy and that's and, uh, that I could bring it to you as a committee and he asked that I do so. So I am bringing it to you. I think there's two things to consider here. One is um, the needs of that student. Um, and second is the impact uh, that it potentially could have that uh, if other school choice families, can, if that school choice family can have transportation, why can't they all? And I'm not sure what um, what the right answer is. Um, so I, I, I guess at this point, I would recommend that we approve it and uh, take up any other requests individually. I think based on longevity, I can make the argument that this student has been taking transportation forever um, since they came here, 12 years of transportation. Um, and if um, you know, if others would, would want that, and I, I think we can take it up, uh, in general, the policy is no, they do not, uh, take transportation. So it's a, it's a tough call. I totally understand, you know, uh, where the parent is coming from, but I also know that transporting school choice students gets very difficult and may have an impact ultimately budgetary. Wise. So just, just so people are clear. Um, this student takes, he gets the bus at an established North Brookfield route. So yeah. it's not like a bus is going out of town to pick him up. So obviously he's brought to a, a bus stop in North Brookfield. Um, you know, I, I see the, the issue that, you know, potentially people might bring this up again, but since, you know, this has been going on for so many years and the, the student is in, you know, 11th grade, I, I personally don't have an issue with allowing this one student to continue doing this until they finish. Yeah, it would seem to me that, you know, unless there was a situation where um, a school choice student were pushing the number of students over the limit where we needed to then get more buses. I mean, that could be a situation where we crossed that bridge when we came to it. But assuming that that's not the case, I feel really comfortable with just allowing it to continue based on past precedent. Yeah, right now, that is not the case. We're not in danger of going over the 25 student limit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Any 
audio working at all for me? Um, Tim, it's it's not real great. Do you want to uh, just text me and I'll I'll read your comment or question? So we're just going to wait for Tim here to let us know what he wants to say. It'd actually probably be quicker for me to like walk. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> um, so we are voting to approve this one student not voting to change the policy. We're going to keep the policy in place. And yes, yeah, that is what they're going to waive the policy for this student. So the policy will continue to exist. We are waiving it for this one student in this situation. Is that, hey, Tim, give me a thumbs up. Where are you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, does anyone else have any questions or comments? All right, uh, I need a motion to approve the uh, waiving the policy, the school choice, uh, the, the policy for this student. I make a motion to approve the policy for that said student. Second. Thank you. Or the waiving the policy. Yeah. I all right, um, so last we have a, a number of donations from the PTO. Um, and so I'll just read them off real quickly. And then if I could ask one of the other school committee members to um, ask for a motion to approve them. So the PTO approved $210 for Mrs. Marr for a Scholastic subscription, $151.58 for Ms. LaCoy for classroom library books, $60 for grade five for chair bands, uh, up to $165 for wiggle seats for grade five, $165 for Mrs. Martin for a scholastic subscription, and $125 for Mrs. Martin for Generation Genius. So just a motion to approve all of the PTO donations. First can I ask for wiggle seaters? Because that sounds super fun. Is that to keep them in their seat, or is that fidget seats, or? Um, my understanding is a wiggle seat is something that, actually, Mrs. Priestley, you know what it is, don't you? Um, the wiggle seats, the ones that you sit on and they wobble, yeah, they're for um, fidgety students. So it's, so Tim wants one, so we'll, uh. We'll send information so you can get one for your for your office. All right. I'm sure your your supervisor will pay for it. <laughs> all right. So um, any other questions? So we need a motion to approve the PTO donations. I make a motion to approve the PTO donations. I second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you so much. All right, if there's no no other comments or questions in the chat, then we're gonna have a move to adjourn. Yeah. Move to adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I am gonna continue to work to try to figure out the technology, but there's no easy answer out here. We've asked a lot of different people. We'll yeah, we'll here. we'll keep trying. All right. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.